Now that we have defined what covalent bonding is, let's take a look at our um, easiest way of representing covalent bonds. That's with Lewis dot structures. These are um, using the electron dot symbols um, that we've introduced before um, that show the location of all the valence electrons. And we'll bring these symbols together to organize them to pair up our unpaired electrons and show the valence electrons that are bonding and the valence electrons that are lone pairs. Um, here's an example of a water Lewis dot structure that can be written and represented in a couple different ways. So we can represent our Lewis dot structure with um, just electrons in between. And so in this case, we can see that the ones that are in between the oxygen and the hydrogen are the ones that are actually being shared in a covalent bond whereas the ones that are not in between the two elements are our lone pairs. I think it clarifies a bit if we change the two bonded electrons to a line. So here this line is our two electrons that are being shared between hydrogen and oxygen, represented like this in the previous version. And this helps those lone pairs kind of stand out from our, non, our bonding electrons. We also see things represented like this, and we'll talk about geometry a lot more later in covalent bonding. But um, this is a bond stick model um, that is showing the atoms um, bonded together with the lines as the bonds. And so here the oxygen is white and the hydrogen, or sorry, red, and the hydrogens are white. So we're now gonna walk through how we construct these Lewis dot structures to have a better idea of how atoms are arranging themselves through covalent bonds to form different types of molecules. So here are a few general rules for Lewis dot structures, and then I'll give you a step-by-step -step guide as well. First of all, we're only going to look at our valence electrons. We are not gonna concern ourselves with electrons that are in the inner shells of an atom. The only ones that'll participate in bonding are the ones that are actually on the, the furthest away from the nucleus or the surface of the atom. We're gonna make sure that everything in the main group gets an octet of electrons with the exception of hydrogen for now. We'll talk about a few exceptions um, to the octet rule, but it's safe to assume that you're working with an octet, um, unless otherwise stated. And then for the hydrogen, which was our exception, we're going to make sure that each hydrogen gets two electrons in our Lewis dot structures. So here's kind of a five-step guide to drawing Lewis dot structures. And there's a few different ways to approach this, and you might find other techniques um, um, taught in other textbooks, or actually, I think, in our textbook and our lab manual. Uh, this is the method that I find is um, the most sus like methodical and systematic that um, I think is helpful if you're feeling lost in a moment about how to approach a Lewis dot structure. So I think this method removes a lot of the intuition that Lewis dot structures can sometimes require of um, someone new to chemistry. Um, I'm going to take an example along the way. I'm going to look at um, ammonium, NH3. Oops, sorry. Jumped ahead. So step one is I like to think of the electron dot symbols. This helps me identify the number of valence electrons that I have and allows me to decide what are the number of bonds that I need. So nitrogen has five valence electrons, and it will need then eight minus five, so three bonds. If the eight minus the number of valence electron rule is hard to um, remember, um, what I actually do is I just look at my electron dot symbol, and the number of unpaired electrons will equal the number of bonds that element will likely need to satisfy the octet rule. And then I have three hydrogens, and my hydrogen just has one valence electron. And instead of needing seven bonds, it will only need uh, one bond because it's trying to form just a duet rather than an octet. 
charge of valence electrons. So now with this information, um, I start actually constructing my Lewis dot structure. structure. And um, especially when you have lots of elements or atoms in your molecule, it can be a little overwhelming to think about where to start. So my rule is that I always place the element that needs the most bonds smack in the center and I build off of that one. So in this case, my nitrogen needs three bonds and my hydrogen needs one. So my nitrogen becomes my center of my molecule. And I draw my element or my um, dot symbol as my starting point. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to place um, any atoms that need uh, potentially more than one um, bond to form an octet next. In this case, I only have hydrogen, so I, I just have one bonded elect, um, elements left. Um, so I'm kind of in the same spot. Um, now typically here I pause, and before I finish adding in everything that has only a need for one bond, I make sure that the number of unpaired electrons I have match the number of atoms that I have left that need one bond. And so I've got three places that I can form bonds. I have three unpaired electrons. And I have three hydrogens that each need one bond. So this actually matches up very well. And then I'll place my hydrogens around in those spots. If this didn't match up, then I would know I needed to create double or triple bonds to solve my Lewis dot structure. And I would actually do that step first before placing my hydrogens because it'll allow more flexibility for where um, I can put those multiple bonds. Um, and we'll see an example of this in a second. So I'm gonna place my hydrogens then around matching them up just like connect the dots um, with the unpaired electrons on nitrogen. And I've got a Lewis dot structure. If I want, I can redraw it so it's pretty with my one lone pair and my three bonds to hydrogen. And I can double check this. Um, each of my hydrogens have two electrons and no lone pairs. Um, so they're following the duet rule. My nitrogen has one lone pair and three bonds. Each of those have two electrons. And so I have eight electrons around my nitrogen. So it's following the octet rule. I like to double check at each um, element or atom in my structure rather than counting up the total valence electrons that I had from my elements and then I have in my final structure because that pinpoints areas that have mistakes um, more clearly than just overall knowing whether or not I have the valence electron count incorrect. So let's look at that multiple bond step. If my um, perfect number of hydrogens to nitrogen unpaired electrons wasn't what happened. Um, in this case, we can create multiple bonds if uh, we have kind of extra unpaired electrons that we don't know what to do with. Here's an example of a double bond um, between two oxygens. And what's happening is that there are two bonds, each with two electrons, so four electrons are shared rather than just two. I can go further though and form triple bonds as well. In a triple bond, I have two electron bonds and I have three of them, and so I'll have a total of six electrons shared in my nitrogen. And if I were to draw this with dots, I would say it looks something like this. Or here are my three bonds. Let's walk through two examples now. First, I'm gonna do a Lewis dot structure example that does not have multiple bonds, and then I will do a Lewis dot structure that does have multiple bonds. So here is carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine all together, and this is actually um, uh, monochloride, or sorry, methane monochloride. 
So I have one carbon atom that has four valence electrons, and I'm determining that from the periodic table. Carbon is in group four, um, and so it'll have those four electrons. So I write my element symbol. I've got three hydrogens, each with one electron, and I have chlorine, which is a halogen, so it has seven valence electrons. My carbon has one, two, three, four unpaired electrons, and so it will need four bonds. My hydrogen has one unpaired electron, and it will need one bond. My chlorine has one unpaired electron, it'll also need one bond. So I'm gonna identify my carbon as needing the most bonds. So I'll put that in the center of my structure and I will build off of it. Um, now I'm going to notice that I only have elements that need one bond left. So I'm gonna make sure that I have the same number of atoms with one bond that um, as I do my unpaired electrons in my carbon. So I have a total here of three hydrogen plus one chlorine. So I have four atoms that each need one bond. And sure enough, I've got one, two, three, four unpaired electrons. So I do not need to form multiple bonds. I'll come in and I'll place these around and the, the order doesn't really matter. So I'll start with my hydrogen. And again, I'm, I'm matching these up so that way I'm connecting the dots to form um, my bonds. And here's my chlorine. Always include your, oops, always include the um, lone pairs as well as they're important to our structure. And if I wanted to redraw this, I could clean it up a bit, though it's not necessary, including my lo three lone pairs on chlorine bonded to carbon, which has three bonds to hydrogen. I can now double check. Each hydrogen has one bond, which has two electrons, so it's following the du duet rule. My carbon has four bonds, each with two electrons, so it's following the octet rule, great. And my chlorine has one bond with two electrons and three lone pairs each with two electrons. So I've got eight electrons there. Great, it follows the octet rule. This is a reasonable structure. So let's look at one with um, multiple bonds in it instead. So here's C2H4. So again, I'm gonna write out my electron dot symbols first. I've got two carbons, each with four electrons. That means eight minus four valence electrons that will need four bonds. Again, each carbon is going to need four bonds. And I have four hydrogens, each with one electron, and each will need one bond, because it's in that first group. So um, again, I'm going to start with my element that needs the most bonds, which is my carbon. And typically, if you have carbon in it, that's going to be your starting point every time um, because not much else needs four bonds. So I'm going to start with my carbon in the middle. I'm going to put my electrons around. Whoop. And I've got two of them this time. So I'm not super creative. I'm just going to put them next to each other. And look, I've got these two. I can connect the dots right there. So now I can look at this and I've used all my carbons and I need to start placing my hydrogens. And I've got four hydrogens, so I'm gonna stop and check and see if I have four unpaired electrons. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, these don't match. So I have six unpaired electrons in my structure. And I have only four atoms that can form one bond. If I just subtract these two, that leaves me with two leftover electrons. And I need to do something with those. These are going to form a multiple bond. 
And if I have two extra, that'll form one multiple bond or like one more additional bond. Let's say if I had four, then I would form two additional bonds. If it was six, then it would be three additional bonds. So I'm gonna put my multiple bond in between my two carbons because my hydrogens can only support one bond to a carbon. So I can't form a double bond between a carbon and a hydrogen. And I like to actually move my, elect my, my electrons around or actually connect them up. So I can think about saying, I'm gonna take this one right here and this one right here, and they're gonna form my second bond. Now I've got just one, two, three, four unpaired electrons of which I can place one of my four hydrogens near. So now I can form these bonds to hydrogen and have a double bond. I'm gonna rewrite this though so it looks a little bit cleaner. Um, I like the connect the dots method, but it gets kind of messy. Um, so I've got a carbon that has two bonds between another carbon. Um, that means there are four electrons represented right there. Each one is contributing two electrons to the double bond. And then I've got um, two hydrogens bonded to each carbon like this. And now I can double check myself. Um, each carbon has four bonds, each with two electrons. So that's going to form eight for an octet. Um, so that works. And each hydrogen has just one bond um, with two electrons each. So that's gonna be two electrons and that satisfies hydrogen's duet rule. So try this example out um, and I'll have a separate video with solutions to go over these as well. And these are just drawing Lewis dot structures for three different um, molecules.